Hello, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, friends and comrades. I am the anti-feminist. I decided I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. Uh, instead of me doing what I normally do, which is basically finding whatever I'm going to do the video on, which is usually an article, taking a bunch of screen captures, finding some pictures, then recording the audio bit by bit by bit, and then doing a whole bunch of editing, publishing, and then realizing I missed a whole bunch of edits, I decided I'm just going to do something live uh, with my face just because it's easier. I don't have to... I don't like making videos where it's just like one picture that's stationary the whole time, but it's really hard to come up with like fucking tons of pictures to use. What's up, Rocky? Tons of pictures to use like throughout the whole video. There's certain parts where you're saying stuff that you really can't add a picture to. Anyway, so I decided I was going to do that because I'd rather, you know, chill and have a conversation. You know, we haven't been talking. I don't know what, what character that is. Anyways, um, so, chill with some OG glue. And, uh, my Maverick. Which I absolutely love. It's fucking phenomenally light glass, but it does its job. So what am I making this video about? Well, I'm sure the title will say something uh, something related to it. I am making this video about feminism, because that's the subject that my YouTube channel focuses on. But what about it? Well, there was an article in 2X chromosomes. What is 2X chromosomes? 2X chromosomes is, well, it's how you know somebody's a woman. Well, unless you ask a feminist, and then it gets into how they identify within the binary, or outside the binary. But uh, a woman has two X chromosomes, a man has an X and a Y. So anyways, there's a subreddit called 2X Chromosomes, and it's basically just a place for a bunch of fucking totally cynical, cunty, very misanthropic, very, very delusional uh, people to hang out. They're usually mostly women. There are men in there, which blows my fucking mind, because I was banned really quick for disagreeing. Which is why you don't. But basically, it's just a bunch of chicks sitting around and like rubbing each other's clits in a, in a circle. It's not too much. So basically, the only thing you'll find there is, hey, we're women, we're strong, and we need a safe place to talk. That's exactly what 2X chromosomes is. They actually complained when uh, they were made a default subreddit, which if you don't know what a default subreddit is, there's a website called Reddit. When you go to the front page, subreddits are something that you can create where you can host content. Funny, what the fuck, pictures, etc. When you go to Reddit, there's all the default subreddits. Once you join, you can customize the front page to add and remove subreddits. The defaults are the ones that come on there. And 2X was added not too long ago. Not sure if Chairman Pow was in office when this happened. I think it was right before that. But Reddit has, for a while, been taken over by SJWs. It's to the point where you can't even negotiate your salary because of women. Or, I shouldn't say because of women, because it's really not women's fault, even though it kind of is, because they're the ones choosing not to. It's more of these companies choosing, well, if women who choose not to negotiate their salary, that is the problem. It is not that women who negotiate get less. It is the fact that less women choose to do it. I think it's like 30% or something versus like 60% or 70% for men negotiate for salary. And so they just decide, well, we're not going to have anybody have negotiate, negotiable salary because women don't do it very often, so let's not have anybody do it to save anybody from making more money. Anyway, so when it was made a default subreddit, they complained because they said that they didn't want people coming in and harassing them, which if you are on Reddit, that is going to happen. I mean, the Redditors are known for harassing people. They're, they're pricks of the internet them, 4chan, 8chan, whatever the fuck that is, those websites. So, um, I'm not sure what they thought would happen. Also, when you run a subreddit and you're trying to make it just basically white women, because there aren't a lot of, uh, there aren't a lot of minorities, and I shouldn't say minorities, I guess ethnic groups, I don't know what the fucking political correct term is. I, I, I guess they're, uh, aren't a whole lot, so it's basically a bunch of white women talking about how they have it so fucking hard in America. It's not like there's a whole bunch of Redditors in fucking Pakistan on 2X chromosomes, which would make sense, because those people do need a safe space, because 
they're in danger all the time. Not like you'd understand. So, um, they got upset about it. And as far as I know, they don't seem, they're still a community, they're still on the front page. And they seem to be doing okay. Anyways, so uh, they posted an article, somebody on there did, uh, saying that in Paris, there was a study done where 100% of the women were sexually harassed on the subway, or on the train, I'm not sure what they fucking call it over there. Okay, I'll, I'll add pictures in periodically, uh, hopefully if I remember. If I don't, then, well, you'll have to go read the article yourself, and I'll definitely put that in the description. Anyways, so the article, when I actually went to read it, first off, the one that they link to, of course, doesn't give you any real information. There's no real sources. There's just links. It's basically like one of those clickbait pages. So once you get through that and you finally click the right link to get you to the local uh, from France website where it actually talks more about it, you find out that the sample size was 600. 600 women, which is quite a small number. Now, small sample sizes cause a lot of problems because, you know, the smaller the group of people, the less chance there is, or the more chance there is for them there to be an issue because the more people you have, the better statistics you're going to get, obviously. So, uh, that being said, I'm going to have to, normally this is something I would do while I'm not here, but since I'm trying to do this without um, without having to edit this fucking piece of shit afterwards. So right now it's got 542 upvotes, and who knows what it'll have when it gets done. Um, let's see here. There is a specific part of this article that I am trying to read. And here it is. Do, 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 do. Where is it? It's how they define it. Oh, that's right. This one doesn't link to the actual thing. Okay. It says, quote, quote, the council defined gender harassment as the imposition of any kind of words or behavior, or it says of behavior, words of behavior. I'm not sure if that's written correctly, that are intended to create a situation that is intimidating, humiliating, degrading, or offensive. It added that these actions aren't usually physical and hence aren't punishable by law. That's kind of the point. The point is that offensive and degrading and humiliating and even intimidating, those are all very open interpretation. I felt intimidated when I was at a show and there was somebody there that I was kind of having a tiff with when I was younger. I felt intimidated because he kept on staring me down. I knew he wanted to fight me, but I didn't know if he'd do it, you know, at the show. So I felt intimidated. Do I consider him harassing me for doing that? No, because he was just looking at me. Did it make me feel uncomfortable? Yeah, definitely. Did it scare me a little bit? Yeah. But that's not harassment. It would have been harassment if he would have come up to me, or if he would have laid his hands on me or said, I'm going to do something to you. But just the look, as intimidating as it may feel, it's not really, it's not harassment. At least not what I would consider it. Um, I guess it depends on how it happens. You know, if it's a stranger then that's uncomfortable. If it's somebody following you, then that's different. But I'm not going to get into this. I try to stay away from being overly PC because I think that it's fucking stupid. But at the same time, I try to watch what I say because of the fact that when you make content like I do, people love to pick it apart as best they can. And so I try not to be... I try not to say anything that I can't defend, which I think is a good policy for anybody to have. But that also means that I try to stay away from calling women and men and people in general names and insults and getting to that point. But it's fun, and that's why I do it. So anyways, basically, it was 600 people, and 
that's a small sample size, but it's also a problem because of the fact that if a woman deems something as sexual assault, then it is according to this. And well, that's a huge problem. It's, it's a huge problem because you cannot say, I am a strong, independent woman, hear me roar, but if I'm told something, like if I'm flirtatiously told something, then it will upset me. So anyways, there's a source, um, and the definition of harassment, um, according to the article, keeps on changing from article to article. Uh, one person actually wrote out that when contacted, this is uh, from one of the articles, uh, when contacted by France 24, the spokeswoman's contextualized the figures providing information that was not included in the report. The group admitted that it did not hire a research institute, but instead calculated the statistic from a sample of 300 women who had all participated in public consultation about women's roles in the public space and harassment in public transportation. This means that all of the women polled were already concerned by the subject in question. And I'm going to put the source for that, of course, in the description. I'm not going to go anymore about the article because it's ridiculous. But the comments in, in here are, are just insane. There's people saying that, uh, you know, teach men not to harass. And, you know, shouldn't that be the message? And it's just that kind of stupidity. And what is more insulting is the fact that people often say, well, you don't understand because you are not a woman. Well, it's surprising to me that these people haven't done any research. Because if they had, they'd know that more men are raped in our country than women. Men are put away longer for the same crime. They are not given custody as often. They are not given genital integrity rights when they're born in our country. They are not, they're conscripted to die in war if necessary. They basically are the second class citizens. They die 10 years earlier than women and they commit suicide up to, uh, I know it's like by the time you're in your 20s, it's like several times more. So I don't know how somebody can honestly say with a straight face, you know, we wouldn't understand. Actually, I would understand. I don't think you would understand. I think you're just, that self-imposed victimhood is just too strong for you to carry. And I think that's, that's one of the huge problems, is this whole self-imposed victimhood thing, where, where they take on this burden of everyone's out to get me. And if you feel like that, well then certainly. But it makes all the rest of us have to tiptoe around and we can't just people can't do that you cannot constantly worry about stepping on somebody's toes and the fact that this article is so popular already on the 2x chromosome stuff is just kind of one of the points that I make about feminism it's just it's really toxic because the people are so almost ready to be a victim because most people don't want to be a victim being a victim is a bad thing but yet if you go on 2x it's almost all about victimhood it's just like you would think that they lived in saudi fucking arabia you would think that you know all, all the people on there were living in fucking pakistan but no it's usually just a bunch of privileged white women complaining and when they have the audacity to tell people, especially men who have been through possibly more than they have, that they don't understand because they're not a woman. And they say that we're sexist for mansplaining. What is that? What is that? Is that labia splaining when, when a woman tells you that you wouldn't understand that's the whole 
that's the whole problem with this dichotomy of being able to make assertions without taking assertions. They make all the assertions they want in the world. You know, rape is something that can be taught away. I don't know how somebody does their mental gymnastics to get to that point, but it seems like they believe it. So, um, that article is just one example, in, in my opinion, of well, not in my opinion, but the fact of the problems with the whole movement for women trying to better themselves. Because right now, when men are not living as long, when they're born, they can have their genitals cut up in the United States by a doctor in a hospital with the apparent approval, and nobody says a word about it. And then as an adult, when you try to mention it, you get shamed for it. People say, oh, it's not the same thing. Oh, it's worse for women. I, I mean, how, take that same mentality of, you know, what if somebody was raped and you say, well, I was raped, and they go, well, my, the, when I was raped, it was different. So therefore, it's, you know, it was worse for It's just this, it, almost a competition. And it's no longer about honest being just a victim and suffering something. It's more of, these people create a community out of victimhood and not a good one where it's like a support group. This is like what this is how feminism started. A bunch of rich entitled white women wanting even more, even though they weren't due for it. And I mean specifically by that, the right to vote because the right to vote was given to men as payment for them fighting and dying in the war. It was basically like, listen, if you're going to die for a country, then you have a say in who's going to be president and run it. I, I don't necessarily agree with, you know, women not being able to vote, obviously, and I'm glad women have the vote. But my point still stands that the women who started feminism were not oppressed in the sense that we think of. They were pretty fucking well off. They were housewives that mostly lived in estates with servants and slaves usually. No, no I'm just kidding about the slave thing. But really, back, back in the day, back when the whole um, feminism movement started really roughly, but well, we won't get into that because, again, this is nothing to do with Paris. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, i got to really take some right here. So the way I see it, it, harassment is harassment. It's not feeling offended. It's not having somebody make you feel a little humiliated by saying something. To me, that's harassment in the sense that it's annoying. Somebody's harassing you in an annoying way. When I think of harassment, I think of something that somebody's touching or somebody's making, you know, threats or they're, you know, I think we all can picture in our heads what we think harassment is. And for some of us, I think the line is lower and some of us think the line is higher. But in general, I think most educated, strong people would not have that line drawn at if somebody says something to me that's uncomfortable, like nice ass. Somebody said to me, nice ass, I, I, which I've had happen once or twice, I've said thank you. It's a compliment. If, I, if you don't see it as a compliment, then you say, uh, I, I don't find that very polite. If they ignore that, then they're an asshole. There's a lot of assholes in the world. <coughs> so I think I'm going to end here, just because I, I really have no idea if this is going to even turn out to be any good because I've kind of just been rambling. I've been trying to keep a coherent train of thoughts going, but it's been kind of difficult because a lot of the stuff is visual. So I probably won't do this again in the future. But if you enjoyed it, maybe I will. I don't know. 
me being seen by the camera is weird too because I'm used to doing, if I'm ever being seen, I'm used to like doing something, uh, something interactive. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. Have a great day, everyone. And uh, be sure to check out the links in the description. You can read those crazy comments from all those crazy feminists. And you can participate in the conversation because this video and that thing should still be new enough that you should be able to actually participate in it. Also, subscribe, like, I don't know where those buttons are, but, you know, do that thing you do. Mm. I need to eat something. I think I'm going to go do that. Have a great day, everyone.